day that the Lord has made. And come on, let us rejoice and be glad in him. Somebody open up your mouth and rear your head back and just give God a hallelujah this morning. Come on, somebody, I need to hear you this morning. I need to hear you. If he woke you up this morning, started you on your way, I need you to say hallelujah this morning. Oh, come on here. I need to hear you in this place this morning. Has he been good to you? Has he been better to you than you've been to yourself? Do you need anything from the Lord? I need to hear you this morning. Oh, don't look at me like I'm crazy. Look at, come on here. Let's give God the praise. Wave your hand. Come on, somebody. Let me know you're still alive this morning. Listen, listen. I'm excited about Jesus this morning. Amen. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. I'm excited about Jesus this morning. Listen, we have a special preacher in the house this morning. Listen, he is no guest to this house at all. And we're excited to have him here this morning preaching. Listen, I want you to open up your mouth. And why don't we give God a praise for Bishop Listen Page this morning. Come on, somebody. Come on. I don't hear y'all this morning. As we stand, just for a moment, if you would, can you get out of your seats and go prophesy to as many people as you can and tell them this is going to be the greatest season of your entire life. Just get out of your seat and go prophesy to as many people as you can and tell them this is going to be the greatest season of your entire life. That's right. Come on, walk across the aisles. Walk across the aisles. Go find as many people as you can and tell them this shall be the greatest season of your entire life. Come on. Some of y'all haven't moved yet. Some of y'all haven't moved yet. Come on, get out your seat. Go tell somebody this shall be the greatest season of my entire life. Hallelujah. Now, as you stand for a moment, as you stand for a moment, ju just lift your hands uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ if you can. We have been led in such spirited, anointed worship today. And as your hands are extended to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to take a moment and just consider what your life would have been like if the Lord had not snatched you out of the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. Take, take a moment and think about where you would be, where you could be, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. And if all our God requires all our God wants is worship and praise to come from lips that are most appreciative. I think we should give God what he wants. So come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Throw your head back. And the Bible says when we know not what to pray for as we ought, the spirit makes intercession with moanings and groanings that cannot be uttered. I want you to give God some divine articulations this morning. I want you to open up your spirit and out of your spirit, I want it to come out of your mouth how much you love, how much you honor, how much you appreciate our God today. So come on, let your soul make a boast in the Lord. Come on, extend your hands, open up your mouth. Come on as loud as you can. Give our God the worship. Oh, 
That's how it sounds on an early Sunday morning, second Ebenezer. Come on. Open Otamandi Oshandabaya. That's right. Come on, worship the king. Come on, worship the king. Come on, worship the king. Worship him. Hallelujah. Come on, give our God worship. Give him worship. Give him worship. Give him worship this morning. Give him worship this morning. I said, give him worship this morning. I said, give him worship this morning. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Now, come on, throw your head back. Give God the loudest Shabbat hallelujah that you can. Come on, one more time for the king. Give God the loudest Shabbat hallelujah that you can. Come on, one more time because God's been faithful. Throw your head back. Give God a loud Shabbat hallelujah. Now come on, clap your hands and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, O ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, clap your hands, O ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, O ye people. Hallelujah. The Lord bless your hearts. Take your seats in the Lord's presence if you can this morning. It is always such a good thing to give thanks and praise unto our God because he is most deserving of all the glory, the honor, and the praise. So let God arise and let all of our enemies be scattered. For a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Anybody knows no weapon that is formed against you. Y'all don't sound like y'all believe that. I said, anybody know no weapon that is formed against thee is going to prosper for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Anybody in this house know favor is all over your life? Come on, talk back to me, Second Ebenezer. I said, anybody know favor is all over your life? Come on, look down the road where you're sitting. Look down the road where you're sitting and tell everybody on your road, favor is all over this road. Y'all said that real lack of days ago this morning. Come on, say it loud as you can. Tell them favor is all over this road. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Anybody glad to be free in this house today? Well, it is always with tremendous deference and respect that we celebrate and we pay homage to one of God's choicest servants. You are extremely blessed. You are overwhelmingly favored to sit under the ministry, under the anointing, under the vision, under the purview of an authentic, legitimate leader. Do you love our pastor? Come on, the set man of this house, the Honorable Bishop Edgar Van. Come on, you can do much better than that for your leader. Oh, come on, you can do better than that for your leader. And while we celebrate him, can we celebrate one of the most lovely first ladies in the entire world? Come on, my sister, the woman of God. Come on, give it up. Come on, give it up for First Lady Sheila Van today. 
and to all of your elders, to Elder Ingram today, to Elder Jesse Williams, to Elder David Ridgeway, and to my sister, uh, Administrator Par Excellent, Sister Rhonda Graves. Let's give all of them a round of applause. Come on, you can do much better than that. And to the greatest music ministry in the entire world. Come on, my sister that led praise and worship. Come on, to the musicians. Come on, you can celebrate them better than that. And to all of you, my father's children that have been called out of darkness and transplanted over into the kingdom of light, recipients of his imputed righteousness, we can say it is good for us to be here. Can you say amen? It is a joy to be here with Second Ebenezer celebrating 40 years of ministry, 40 years of excellence in ministry. Oh, come on, you can give God an applause for that. Now, I'm, I'm under strict mandates because you know, Pastor knows I'm a little long-winded, so I'm under strict mandates. He's probably watching even as I speak. I feel his spirit somewhere around here. So he said, pay, swing as hard as you can at 8 o'clock and let my people go. <laughs> uh, uh, so I want you to look uh, into a New Testament uh, text Matthew chapter number 16 Matthew chapter number 16 uh, for your consideration now you know I'm going to do this from an expository uh, way so you don't have to stand if, you, if I can break that custom you don't have to stand because you'll be standing for the next 30 minutes and I don't want to do that to you uh, so let me let me break that custom uh, j just follow me along uh, in your Bibles or uh, with your smart devices. Uh, watch us on the screen. Uh, Matthew chapter 16. I, I want us, I really want us to underscore uh, maybe five verses from this chapter. And those verses being 13 through it including number 17 of Matthew chapter number 16. Now, I don't have the benefit to go deep into it, but just in your private devotion, it, it would probably serve you well to get the full context to maybe read verses five through 12 because there's two religious sects or bodies of people that I, I kind of want to highlight, but I, I, they're not in verses 13 and 17. Now, let me start out by saying this. Jesus only had difficulties doing ministry around religious people. I'm almost done right there. Jesus <laughs> only had a struggle with the interpretation of his message from folk that frequently went to the synagogue. Now, I, I, I'm... I don't want to make this an announcement, but I guess I have to on, on the front end of, 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 this, of this discourse. Your greatest disappointments, conflicts, paradoxes, oxymorons are going to come from folk that sit in the pew like you. You don't have to worry about folk who don't call themselves Christians. It's, it's the folk who sit in those seats, who you high five, electric slide, run up and down the islands, demo, 
the folk who put you under the greatest light of scrutiny. Now what they do, Jesse, what they do, they'll criticize you and they do worse than you. Let me come on this side over here, right here. They, they, they'll point their fingers at you. And they have a myriad of issues in life that they haven't brought under control yet. But they have the nerve to try to judge you. Lord have mercy up in here now. Now, this is it's interesting because see, Jesus only, only is criticized by religious people, not spiritual people, religious people. So the volume of services you attend does not make you spiritual. Just because you haven't missed one service during the 40 year anniversary, that does not mean you are spiritual. Now, it, 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 it may mean you're religious and you're spirited, but it doesn't mean you are spiritual. So, people tend to categorize your level or your, how can I say it, your effectiveness in church based on how many times they see you in the institutionalized Christian environment. Just because I'm in the environment doesn't mean the environment is impacting my life. Am I, am, am I right, somebody? And I, I wasn't going to bother you too much this morning, but, but, but uh, uh, millennials do not attend church because three things are very prevalent in institutionalized Christianity. The number one thing, or uh, can I say one out of the three things, is hypocrisy. Number two, moral failing. And number three, irrelevance. People are tired of coming to church, being around a bunch of hypocrites. I ain't got no help. People are tired to coming to church and putting or having an expectation attached to their life of how they should live and the people who are the models in the context of that keep failing. That's number two. Number three, they are tired of coming to church, hearing messages that are not relevant to where they're living in life right now. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. This generation needs transparency, needs authenticity, needs legitimacy, and they are tired of the people who are leading them in worship full of a bunch of hypocrisy, talking out both sides of their mouth. I'm gonna get in trouble up in here now. Uh, pr prove it to me, Bishop. Prove it to me. All right, go to verse 13. I'll read it to you. And when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, watch this, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Now stop right there. It's very obvious based on the text that Jesus was sensitive to what people were saying about him. I'll try one more time. It was very, very plainly expressed in the text that Jesus was aware of his surroundings. 
he knew that there was a great majority of people no matter what he did he was not going to be able to influence I'm going to say that one more time. He did not spend a lot of his energy trying to fit in the groups, in the cliques, in the frats, in the sororities that did not want to have anything to do with him. Y'all going to make me preach up in here early. You spend too much of your time brown nosing around a bunch of people that will never receive who you are. And sometimes you ought to thank God they didn't let you fit in their clique. You ought to thank God. God, you don't fit into their group because where God is taking you, he is not going to allow people to take the credit for the next level of your spiritual development. Mm -hmm. Some people just want to be in your life because they recognize there is a favor, there is an anointing on your life. And what they want to do is they want to get close to you to get take an advantage of you but when you become comfortable being authentic and confident in who you are you do not need them to validate your person No, 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 wait, 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 wait. It, it's, it's very obvious. David, it's very obvious to me that Jesus was aware of what people in the community were saying about him. Now, he wasn't in Caesarea that was near the Mediterranean. He was near Caesarea of Philippi, which was 25 miles of Jerusalem near what we would consider the Decapolis where there were 10 Greek cities, cities where the uncircumcised or the Gentiles live. People that were not necessarily monotheistic or Jewish in their perspective. They may have been religious, they may have served a God, but they were known as idolaters. But he understood in the region of Caesarea, uh, they were, they were kind of, you know, you know kind of purporting, you know, his reputation. Because remember, when Jesus started doing ministry, he goes one year of being obscure. Then he goes a second year of being popular. Then he goes into a third year of persecution. The first year, nobody knew who he was. And I submit to you many times, it is better to attempt to do ministry around people who do not know who you are because when people think they know who you are then they try to define you I ain't got no help up in here now I'm so sick and tired of people trying to define me because they have some limited information about me just because you think you know my process and you think you know some of my struggles and you think you see me go through some failures that does not mean you know who I am Ooh. can I talk a little bit in here when you know who you are you don't need anybody to pump you up and stroke your ego I am what I am by the grace of God Wait, 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 y'all, 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 y'all sit down. Y'all make me nervous. Y'all sit down. Uh, 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 Jesus, Jesus is, is in Caesarea Philippi, and, and he's in this region, and he starts to do ministry. He starts to do ministry in an unfamiliar region, a, a region that have heard of him, but they have not yet come in contact with him, and he does not ask the region to define him. He does not ask those in Caesarea of Philippi to define him. This is real powerful. He asks those who are a part of his ministry. <laughs> 
his disciples. Uh huh. Now, now Jesus was not insecure because had he been insecure, he would have never asked them, tell me who men say that I am. No, 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 no. He is well aware that people run their mouth. I almost said something else, but it's too early in the morning. Uh, people run their mouth. They're going to talk about what they don't know. They're going to talk about what they speculate. They're going to talk about what they do know. And if they don't know, then they lie. I ain't got no help up in this church. Y'all must not been in church a long time. If you ain't been lied on yet, hang around church another seven days. Folk will lie on you in church. My God, you can be in church worshiping and starting to cry because your spirit is broken and you're in worship and they'll look down the line and see you weeping and they will assume, uh-oh, they got a domestic problem. Uh-oh, something happened in that. And the only reason I'm crying is because I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. That's why you cannot spend a lot of your energy apologizing and trying to explain to people what God is doing in your life. So what you don't understand? So what you can't validate it? If you knew the hell I go through secretly just to keep my mind stable, you would understand why when I walk in the door, I've got so much joy joy and I got a praise on the fruit of my lips wait wait now uh, uh, he asked those who are a part of his ministry and watch this he says who do men say that I am can, 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 can I help some of you out it's nothing worse than being good to people and the people you're good to take you for granted don't get me started with that lord I, I can preach a whole message on that see negro i mean i'm sorry people forget you know what people have a tendency to forget the bridges that carry them over and they got the nerve to act like they got there on their own can i help somebody out god uses people to bless your life God uses people to open up doors for you. God uses people to pray for you. That's why keep careful how you treat people. Yeah, yeah, be careful because be not deceived. God is not more whatsoever you sow. You ever seen people uh, always talking about nobody like me? You know why we don't like you? <laughs> they always talk about me. You know why we talking about you? Because you have talked about everybody else. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. The way you get love is that you sow seeds of love. How you get support, you sow seeds of support. I ain't got no help up in here. You can't be mean and evil and too trifling and too faced it and think folk are going to love you. The devil is a liar. Whatever you put out there, you'll get it back in return. Jesus says, who, how much time I got? No, I, I feel van spirit, how much time I got? Uh, uh, Jesus said, who do men say that I am? What have you heard them say about me? <laughs> I, I'll talk about this at the next service. Jesus could not have done effective ministry had he lived today. Because Twitter, Facebook would have killed him. 
Lord, I ain't got no helper. Now, y'all gonna sit here and look at me like a deer in headlights. Some of y'all are professional. <laughs> professional social media fighters. <laughs> you ain't man or woman enough to tell somebody in their face how you feel about them. You get on the computer. Lord, I feel like preaching up in here today. You get on the computer. You stand or sit behind a keyboard with your coward itself. And instead of telling somebody how you feel about them, you'd rather put it out there over the world wide web. Jesus says, who do men, what, what they saying about me? I wonder if I went around Detroit after 40 years of effective ministry. I wonder what they would be saying about Second Ebenezer. Who do men say y'all are? Are you the arrogant church? Are y'all the bougie church? Let me come talk to them over there right there. Is, is this the aristocratic church in Detroit who pastor has a mastery over the English language? that speaks in all types of phrases and terms and, and semantics. I mean, his, his verbosity is par excellent. Is, 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 is this the church with, with, with the dancing choir director? I ain't got no help up in there. Is, is, is this the church that's able to build something like this in a failing economy? Is, 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 this, is, is this the church that got all those nice cars and parking lot, Mercedes and BMWs and Range Rovers? I, I would be curious to go around the city and ask, who do men say we are? Is, is this the arrogant church? Or is this the church where the leaders don't know how to treat people? The order done got quiet again. Is, 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 is this the church that, that has structure, protocol, and order? As long as the pastor is around is this the church that 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 strives against each other with rival and competition or, or is this a church that loves everybody wouldn't you wouldn't you be curious to be a fly on the wall to hear what they say about you who do men say we are See, when you attempt to treat everyone with equity, you could care less about other people's opinions of you. See, the reason some of you are so sensitive and easily wounded about people's opinions is because what they may be saying is true. Lord, I ain't got no help up in here now. It, 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 is it possible you are mean as hell? Is it? possible you are moody is it possible you are some timey is it possible you do vacillate is it possible that you do assimilate is it possible that you are phony you are fake you are not real you're a perpetrator is it true 
because I'm finding out when you know who you are no matter what people say about you it does not change your attitude or your disposition in fact when they tell me I'm not gonna make it and I know that God has told me I am gonna make it that makes me walk up in the building and start praising God like I lost my mind because I know if God said it it has got to come to pass because the promises of God are yea and amen wait who Jesus said who do men say that I am what they saying about you are you kind are you friendly after 40 years have you changed for the better Man, I wish I had time to deal with it. You mean to tell me you sat in second Ebenezer all these years and you don't have anything to show for it except cancel checks from tithes and offerings all you have to show for is new outfits you haven't won anyone to Christ your family don't want to know the Lord you mean to tell me after all these years of sitting under this powerful teaching and preaching your disposition is still as sour as it was before you came to know the Lord then why have you been coming to church you have been wasting your time church is not a social gathering I come here to get enriched and to get empowered and to transform I wish I had some help up in here now I came because the enemy fights me all week long but when I come to church I get what I need to go back out there and defeat the devil who do men <laughs> say that I am? How many minutes I got? I'm done. Can I get one minute with this? Got to get just one more minute. Okay. Who do men say I am? All right. One person stands up. Peter. We all need a Peter in our life. Lord, let me, let me leave it alone. You need somebody that's going to ride or die with you. Do, do I got any Peters in that? You need somebody that's going to fight for you when you can't fight for yourself. You need somebody that's going to say, if you bother them, you got to bother me. You got to have somebody that say, if you talk about my mama, Lord have mercy, I'm going to lay this Holy Ghost down and I'm going to go beside you. you we all ain't going to say nothing. We don't need no more spiritual wimps and spiritual punks. We need folk that's strong, that's got a backbone, that don't mind fighting for what they believe. We need some folk that take up for one another. I'm going to leave it alone. No, no, I'm going to leave it alone. I'll pick it up later. I'm going to leave it alone. Peter says, Lord, this is what they say. Some say, <laughs> you Elijah. Some say you John the Baptist, you reincarnated. Some say you one of them great prophets. And Jesus said, well, wait, wait, wait. Who you say I am? Wait, this is kind of powerful. See, the first question gives way to the most important question, which is, who do you say I am? In other words, I've invested all this time in being attached to you in a relationship. I've walked with you. I've talked with you. I've eaten with you we slept together and you mean to tell me you don't know who I am yet I ain't got no help up in here now you mean to tell me I've sacrificed time with family members and sacrificed time cultivating my future just to be a 
attached to you and you can't speak up for me and tell me who I am to you so y'all ain't gonna say nothing that's the problem with the church we so easily forget the people that were there for us when we need them the most so what what other folk feel about them what have I been to you have I been good to you have I been faithful to you have I been equitable have I been congenial no tell people what I mean to you I don't care what anybody else say I care about what you say because I spent time with you Stand on your feet. Reach out, get somebody by the hand. Leave no hand untouched. I wish I had time to really deal with it today. Squeeze that hand. Look to the left, look to the right. And look people in their eye and, and, and tell them, success is all over you the next time somebody asks me about you you know what I'm gonna say success is on them next Hyundai oh Shandaba the next some time somebody inquire I'm gonna tell them the anointing is on you Now let's 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 make sure I'm, I'm talking right if you holding hands with somebody you don't feel no anointing on them that's the wrong hand to have early this morning you need to have somebody hand that's anointed come on look at him again look at him again and tell him success is all over you Father, for the next few remaining moments, impart into the hands that I hold whatever they need. Let this be an unexpected day of miracles and supernatural increase. I come against every assignment of hell. I speak complete healing. Spirit, soul, and body. Every sickness shall now be made whole. Oh God. By the time they get home, a miracle shall be waiting on them today. By the time they get home, you're going to make it up to them. By the time they get home, it will be beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We thank you in advance because we know the work is already done. In Jesus' name. Before you let that hand go, look to the left, look to the right again and say it as loud as you can. Success is all over your life. Now clap those hands and praise God like you believe it. Come on, you can do better than that.